Okay, in today's tutorial, I'm going to create an underwater scene like this, where it's kind of like almost amongst underwater caves, looking up at the surface and the sunlight beams coming down. This is the iPad Pro 2, uh, the second generation. It's the 12.9 inch version. I wanted to do a bit of a demonstration to show how painting works in action, but also I wanted to show how to paint this kind of scene as well. Okay, so I've obviously got a white canvas. It's A4 just the standard, one of the standard default settings of A4. And I'm going to want to get rid of the white to begin with because it gets very difficult to see beyond the white canvas. So I've selected a very pale, almost like greeny blue and quite a, a light whiter version of that. Okay, so I selected another layer and this time I'm going to choose a slightly darker version of the same kind of greeny blue, maybe just a touch more towards the blue. So I'm going to just start putting in some kind of distant or more distant rock structures here. So there's going to be all sorts of different layers. I'm going to create a sense of perspective with distance. And that's going to be achieved by the, the colour shifts really, mainly. So now what I can start to do is maybe get a slightly darker version. Again, test it. Yep, yeah, that'll do. And start putting in some slightly closer rock structures. Maybe sometimes they'll go over the top and start to enclose that area. So maybe it's like a tunnel coming through, closing off certain bits, and there's a channel of light seeing through some kind of tunnel or something. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what the outcome is going to be as of yet. You notice I've got the opacity turned up to the top. It just stops you, because if you, if you do this kind of thing when you haven't got full opacity, I'll just sharpen the brush so you can see it, you know, the number of times you go over it and it starts to create texture there, which I'm not really looking for. So I want it just to be kind of flat at this point. I can always add texture to it later. I just want to create the layered effect at this point. What I'd like to do now is put the second or the next layer on, on a different, uh, the next change in darkness on a different layer rather. In fact, I'm going to make this more dramatic this time. I think that we need it maybe a sudden jump forward in terms of distance so I might put something that really intrudes a little bit more here I would say there's, there's no particular kind of shape that is going to appear in these kind of rocks the water and you know erosion maybe some kind of coral like growths mean that you get kind of quite random blobby kind of shapes there's I guess in a sense there's no kind of straight lines and it's all quite kind of globular in terms of the shapes. Okay, so I'm going to make a, an even bolder step towards the real dark tones now. In fact, what I think I will do for this is perhaps just take it a step towards the green. Now the reason that you would get more green is that you might get some kind of plant life growing over the rocks, but you'll see the green less as it gets into the distance. So just like if you were doing a landscape where you have green fields that seem to get more blue in the distance, it's the same effect underwater, except that you don't have the bluey atmosphere of the air, you kind of have the kind of the blue filters of the water instead. But the effect is ultimately the same, that it gets less green as it goes in the distance and then more the vibrant greens in the foreground. But I don't want to go over the top with it, I just want to start to suggest perhaps a little bit more green in areas. I can always use the, the highlights to really exaggerate that point a bit more. So I might go back to the initial layer, not the background, but the, the layer with... It's got two sections actually, I'm going to go back to that layer. And I want to select that colour here, and I want to start just maybe closing down the, the area where the light's managing to get through a little bit. I think maybe that area is too big, so I just want to shut that down a little bit more. And then I can do the same thing with the next changing colour because that again is on the same layer. It's in behind these two, but it's on the same layer as that first initial change. In fact, in areas, I think I'm going to allow it to blend in a little bit. So the transitions now are not going to be quite as sudden. So I can create some sort of in-between layers too. So you might have some sort of shelves that stick out, some extra things that are casting shadow because the light source is coming from up here. And you'll see later on when I add some sort of rays of light that are coming through, that it's very much coming down towards you as the viewer looking up. So that means that light will hit the, the edge of it from the top, 
but then the shadows will be on the under section of it. So you will get a kind of contrast between light bit right next to a, a shadowed bit. It probably wouldn't look like that if you were looking from above. All you would see is the daylight hitting it, so you wouldn't see the shadows when because we're looking at it from underneath upwards. You'll see more of these sort of shelves that stick out. So that's the main sort of colour shift, but then you might have it more gradiated with a few extra bits like this. And it's useful to have the, the Apple Pencil set to pressure sensitive to this because you can really do some subtle things on there as well as pressing on properly and you get the real firm, intense end of that colour as well. Okay, so I'm going to move to the next couple of layers. Now I'm going to choose the, the darker colour and I'm going to do something a little bit similar. Make sure I'm still on the correct layer, yep. Yeah. I'm going to start creating some extra kind of bits that are catching the light a little later, but then also some shaded areas, which are what I'm adding now. So essentially what started off, I mean, I'll show you if I delete that now, what started off looking like two layers now because of the kind of transitions and blending of one into the other, you can start to see it more as one layer really rather than two. And the same will be the case for this one. Once I start to do some of the kind of in-between bits between the two of them, it's easier to start seeing that layer as just one layer rather than two. Okay, I'm going to select that colour I want and perhaps a bit more of that almost blending into the other colours too. So it's quite rough at the minute and I'm perfectly happy with that. It doesn't need to be neat at this stage. Then what I will do is create another layer and really start picking out some of the finer details and that will be what kind of neatens up the image. But at this stage, I'm just sort of finding my way with the forms, trying to settle on a, a general composition as I'm not copying from a particular image. I've done my research, I've looked at various examples of this type of image, but this is still being made up. So it's researched, but not copied. And that's the way I prefer to work. I prefer to certainly observe and, and figure out how things are supposed to be constructed by looking at examples. But I think that if you're copying every little shape, like for like from a photograph, it gets really tedious, really boring at that point. And you just become a bit like a kind of human photocopier really, which I don't really see as being that creative. Certainly study. And you know, if you're earlier on in your art development, there's nothing wrong with copying. But for me personally, I've, I've done years and years of copying. So I, I like to sort of go out on a bit of a limb sometimes and, and just see if I can construct a similar kind of image based on what I've observed. And that's the point for me at which it becomes really a challenge and also more enjoyable. So I'm getting some almost, you have to imagine the perspective is going up at this point. So although these seem to be encroaching on the middle, in a sense, what they would be doing, and I hope that becomes more obvious later on, is they are towers that might be reaching up towards the surface of the water because this represents the area that it's going to be like the surface. So. As you get a shape like this, it might be that it's starting to, especially as it fades as it gets further away. That's I've started to mix a dark colour there, but as it fades and gets further away, then that, that really is the kind of effect of a, something going higher up like a tower. Okay, I think I'm going to create another layer. It needs to go above everything else. I'm going to start using a really kind of, well, I'll pick this colour to begin with, and I'm going to go for a much darker version of it. Let's just test that. I mean, it's pretty dark, that. Maybe a little bit less. So now I can really start to build into the image now some real dark tones as well. So the whole effectiveness of the image, hopefully, will be the kind of contrast that starts to emerge in the, the overall composition. So there's going to be a real intense light coming from the, the top, but that's only really exaggerated and made to feel intense by the intense dark that's going to be elsewhere in the image too. So again, I'm doing this in sort of sections. I'm allowing for some bits here. And the general shape is, is of most of this image, in fact, is 
a kind of curve like that really so all the, the curves are pointing towards the middle so if I just show you I'm not doing it for the benefit of the picture but just the benefit of an understanding so imagine that's the center all the curves are kind of pointed towards towards there you can see or well, mostly in that direction anyway they couldn't sometimes go off for this direction but there's a general trend towards the, the center and again that's just a, a sort of a, an effect of the perspective really so everything I've done so far has been with the airbrush so a lot of people ask me what brushes I use and I will often well more often than not you'd be using the airbrush I just like the the softness of the transitions I'm not really a, a a kind of painterly painter even with traditional mediums I, I tend to work very thinly to the point where you can't even always tell what material has been used even when I'm using traditional materials when I use oil it's very thin down when I use acrylic it's very thin down so I don't use it in a very textured painterly way So I've just turned the opacity down there because I want this area to retain some of the, the difference in texture there, but I want to just sort of soften it together. So by moving it down to half opacity, I can go over it and you'll still see some of the, the information underneath, but it just starts to uh, create like a middle tone that brings it all together a little bit more. Okay, I will probably add more darker tones later on, but I think at this point I want to move to the real light area now. I really want to exaggerate this so I'll go straight to the white so I'm still in the blue green colors anyway but I want to really intensify the effect of the light from up here so I'm certainly going to get an area that is going to be incredibly white. I may have more than one area in fact it may be split just to make it more interesting then perhaps if I do some rays of light coming through but I could start to break up this area later on I'm not quite decided yet I think I need to sharpen that however. The surface of the water is a little bit, well, it's quite distant at this point. If you're getting closer to the water, you start to see the light rippling. Um, if you've ever seen sort of photographs that are underneath the surface of the water and you look up, you'll see sort of ripples in the water. But that surface is a good way off and it's such an intense difference than everything else, then you're just getting a bit of a washed out kind of textures there really. So I'm not going to do really anything in the way of ripples at this point. I may decide later on that it's appropriate, but I think at this point, stage in the painting that there isn't going to be too much in the way of ripples in that water. Like I say, I may change my mind but I don't think I'm going to add that. Alright, so I've got a more intense light source but I'm also going to do, perhaps I'll do it on a different layer. I'm going to go back to my pale blue but it's going to be a slightly greener version of it for this. I'm just going to test that out, see how it looks. Yeah, and I'm going to turn the opacity down for this. I don't want solid blocks of that colour, I want to keep it quite sort of textured really do it in more gradual amounts and stages but I want to use this color to start maybe just exaggerating there's already some of those shapes there I just want to really start bringing them out and making more of a feature of them so there's going to be some areas that it really catches quite strongly and I can start to just tap the screen create more texture that way some people prefer to use brushes to add texture. I like to do things manually, so everyone's different. So remember where the light source is coming from. You need to think, how is it going to impact this edge? So it's all pointing towards there. So it's really going to catch the light, especially on the kind of round bits that really point towards there. Probably going to change the color somewhat, maybe make it a much whiter version for some areas. I could even choose a more yellowy green perhaps for certain areas but maybe a mixture of the two. Probably a whiter version of it anyway. So really creating a sense that there's light coming from an area within a picture is in incredibly important to demonstrate the impact it has on everything around it so you really must use the the light that catches on the edge of things as a way of really hammering that point home that there's, there's a strong light source coming from up there so you must take the time really work on the edges of things and 
the overall effects will work as long as you make use of techniques like that. Details definitely count on this kind of image. If you want to make it believable, you just have to put the time in. There might be some areas where you get a, a beam of light and it really illuminates certain details, certain bits. Other areas perhaps where it's just there isn't so much in the way of the light coming through. Use variety. I think when you vary it up a little bit, it makes the uh, just looks more believable, more interesting to the eye. I think oftentimes people get one thing that works and then repeat it and repeat it and repeat it to the point where the overall effect no longer works. So just because there's a detail that works on a picture doesn't mean you, you over use it. You've got to use things sparingly sometimes and then that's what keeps it being effective. So equally, there might be a section here that casts a shadow under here, or it might be curving back under here and creating like a shadowed area. So you don't have to do, like I was doing here, the highlights on every single little bump that sticks out. Use it for where you feel the light can actually get through and hit. So there'll be certain areas like here, perhaps, where you don't get very much light hitting it and you just get a concentration of it in one area as it gets closer to the edge, but it doesn't have to go on every single part, every single edge detail of your design. Again, talk about overdoing it. I feel like I did overdo it there in that section. In fact, I'm not happy with that white bit that sticks out there, so let's get rid of that. So we're starting to get a bit closer to the overall effect that I'm aiming for. I'm not going to be doing this to the absolute finest level of detail. It is more about creating the overall effect, but I think that even when things are fairly quick and quite rough sometimes, you can still get a, a believable impression. It's when you zoom in, you start to see that things are quite loose, really. But I'm more focused, because I'm zoomed out, I'm more focused on the overall impression. So if I just show you now, I, well, if I move the image so you can see it more clearly, I've just been working on this layer that's got the highlights so you can see the difference that just the light on the, the edge of some of those formations is really important to the overall effect. But I'm just going to continue working on the sort of texture and the light that's hitting things. I feel like I want to start bringing in some darker things up at the top here, in fact. So I'm just going to experiment by bringing in a darker area up here. Just feel it adds a slightly more interesting shape overall, makes it feel slightly less wide open, a bit more closed in, which is more the effect I was looking for. So now I can go back to my lighter colours and again, maybe just create a sharp edge to this so that it looks like it's also catching the light because it is getting very close to that light area so you definitely would expect the edge of it to be uh, affected by the light. You could also get some areas where you can, as well as the the shapes that stick out, maybe you get a whole area where it's just a bit lighter like that. It just creates a bit more variety of shape, things being pushed slightly further back, some bits sticking out a little bit more. Maybe you get rid of that section, then it's going to push this out a bit more again.
So you can see I've been using some real dark tones now, just to, even in the darker areas, there's still room for texture too. So I've been using a real dark, not quite black necessarily, but it's certainly heading in that direction in places. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to the light colors, really start picking out some highlights. Then I'm gonna start thinking about where to put some of the, the beams that, of light that are coming through. Okay, so I'm on a separate layer this time, above all the others, and I'm going to want to start trying feeding down some beams of light from this sort of surface light area, the sunlight, I presume. Now, I don't want it to be totally white, I want to move it slightly towards the bluer end, and the first thing I'm going to do is perhaps just create some straight lines. So, by holding the, the brush down for a moment, you'll see it snaps to a straight line. I'm going to choose another area here. I've deliberately created a slight sense of perspective, but I don't want to overdo the point. So maybe if now I've got a sharp edge to that, I can colour in that whole area up to that line. Maybe even go over it again if necessary. Just gives you a handy edge to work to. Um, again, maybe do something similar here. Sometimes it's fine just to do it by hand, you don't need the straight line tool at all. It can be quite useful just to set that first couple of lines in place, but everything else will seem to work better as a result of that definite straight line, I think. Bring some of the lines further down, perhaps. Maybe not that far. Maybe it only goes as far as this detail. Obviously I have created light edges here and there, so it would make sense to bring the, the light beams down to that area at the very least. And perhaps just make it even brighter near the top so it can get really intense at its origin, but then fades out as it gets further down. So I may decide that that is perhaps a little bit too strong and I can always just change the opacity of it to make it work for me. So perhaps it was cutting out some of the background detail if I just show you. You lose some of the interesting shapes and textures that you perhaps you're quite happy with. So rather than having it on 100%, you can just knock it back a bit and you'll still get the effect from the sunbeams, but you don't lose everything else. Perhaps another layer on top just to um, then pick out the bits that you're particularly happy with. Maybe there's some bits of those beams that need to be stronger and other bits lighter. Just experiment, see what works, what doesn't. So as I was saying before, perhaps some areas you might have overdone it with the uh, the highlights. Now you've got the sun beams in there and you've got all these areas that have been affected by the sun beam. It's possible at this point to realize that maybe you just need to subdue more areas. If you want the, the lights to look like it's specifically hitting one area more than the rest, you know, maybe some areas need more subduing to really get that point across a bit clearer. Not completely obliterating, but just maybe softening a little bit, perhaps. So we've got the real lightest areas in now. I think at this point, what I need to do is just Really focusing on the darkest areas now, just to close down the, the overall image a little bit. Again, all in an effort to really draw attention to the lightest areas. So I think I need to create a new layer for that actually. Maybe put it right on top, and then just start to shut down some of the light in distant areas. So 
So I created the real dark edges here, all the dark shapes, and I feel like just to finish it off, I'm going to create a light edge to it. I don't really want to add too much detail or texture into it. I just want the light to be catching the edge of it. And now this is the kind of the greenest thing that's going to be in the overall image because it is the closest thing. So maybe it's got some kind of moss or something that's live growing on it. So you just get a few kind of strands that come off it perhaps. I don't know. Some kind of seaweed or algae. Okay, I've decided that this area I feel is encroaching a little bit too much into the composition. There was an area underneath it that I think I want to regain a little bit. Easily done, I just use this selection tool to draw around the bit that I wish to move and then I can move it with this tool. So I'm just going to bring it over here a bit more. I wanted to reveal some of this. Now sometimes empty areas are quite useful. It's not entirely empty, but it, it does create a bit more of a sense of the distance and more space in this area. So I'm happier with it there and I just need to perhaps smudge it in a little bit in this area now and then go back to my drawing tool and just refine the edge a little bit more and that will do. Okay so I'm happy with that overall. I could go into more detail um, certainly if I was going to use it as a finished piece to hang on the wall or well, a finished piece of work, I would probably go into more detail and add some other elements to it as well, but I wanted to just overall create the light effect and give you a sense of drama to the piece anyway. If you want to check out more of my tutorials, just check through my playlist. I do lots of other kind of tutorials like this. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to those people that have been over to my Patreon page and offered me support there. Massively appreciated. If you want to know more about that, just please check the link down in the description below. Otherwise, I hope to catch you back here again. See you later.